Yeah. <laughs> well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Snug Harbor Community School. A special place here in Quincy, one of our 11 elementary schools. We have five middle schools, two high schools, an early childhood center, and soon to be a special uh, learning center. So we have a great, great city with an incredible, incredible education system. And we've got great colleagues who work every day, superintendent, the teachers do an incredible job. But also I want to thank our uh, state officials who, this past year, for example, we had an increase in Chapter 70 money of $10 million to the city of Quincy, which was a huge boost to continue to provide great classroom sizes and all the programs needed. So we all know it all happens in the classroom, that interaction between the teacher uh, and the student and all the staff that surround uh, Superintendent Christopher used to call it surround care, all those people that come together for that chance for every child to succeed. So today I just have the, uh, the good fortune of welcoming our Governor of the Commonwealth, Amara Healy, who has uh, done an amazing job since she got sworn in this past January. Uh, this is not her first stop in Quincy. She's been here a number of times, as has the Lieutenant Governor Kim Driscoll. Uh, they're truly engaged in all the issues. I'm so grateful for their leadership, and particularly on this issue. This is, this is just remarkable. So welcome to our Governor, uh, Her Excellency, Mara Healy. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Mayor. We are so happy to be uh, here in Quincy. It's, uh, it is not our first time. You're absolutely right. And we're here today in, uh, with the opportunity to celebrate a really, really wonderful thing. And I want to begin by thanking the mayor, the team here in the city, including uh, Superintendent Mulvey and Principal Perfuto. Um, thank you for everything that you do. The teachers, the staff, the paras, everybody at, at Snug Harbor. We had the opportunity to, to come in and actually see the folks who were giving out the, the lunches to students, and we thank them for the work they do day in and day out. It's great. Uh, members of the school committee, city council, uh, thank you for welcoming us. And thank you to all who helped make it possible here today. We have some folks who've gotten special visas to come uh, to this <laughs> district. Our House Ways and Means Chairman, Aaron Michaelwitz, um, who really holds the checkbook. I hope I get Thank that. you. We'll, get, we'll, we'll make sure. Um, Representative Tacky Chan, this is his district, of course. Representative Bruce Ayers, Senator John Keenan, and Representative Andy Vargas, um, who is here with us as well. Uh, we appreciate the work of both Representative Vargas and Senator Di Domenico um, on this particular issue. And uh, also, uh, last, well, let me come back. Uh, Rob Leshen, he's the director of our Department of Elementary and Secondary Education Office of Food and Nutrition Programs, uh, working alongside folks across the administration and importantly folks outside the administration, including Project Bread. And Erin Mackler is here today with her team. We really appreciate their sustained advocacy on this issue, uh, working hard day in and day, in, day out to end hunger for families people across this state. And finally, uh, this is a particularly special day in that we get to return to the site where speaker Ron Mariano was a teacher here at Snug Harbor Elementary School. And it was great uh, to be able to, to do this event with you. One, because of course this legislation happened because the legislation, legislature worked to make it happen and uh, this is something that was a particular priority, I know, for the speaker, uh, but it gives us great delight to actually be here today in his old stomping grounds to, um, <clears throat> to be able to celebrate something really, really big. And, and it is big. This is one of the really important things that we will look back on and be able to say we did this year. And we did it. A long time in the making and so, so important because... Today, we're celebrating making free school lunch and breakfast permanent in Massachusetts. Permanent. Mm -hmm. And we do this because we know nothing is more important than making sure that our young people are well fed, looked after, have the opportunity to learn, uh, to grow, to achieve, to do all the things that we want to see them do, just as they do here 
at Snug Elementary School. Uh, we're one of only eight states to have taken this step, and I think it's another uh, act of Massachusetts leadership. During the pandemic, of course, the federal government recognized that this was an important thing to be doing uh, because so many family incomes were at risk. But that program ended, and with the end of that program, it gave us an opportunity to collectively step forward and make sure that this was happening so that never again would there be barriers to students' ability to access food, uh, breakfast and lunch, what they need. And so this was one of the very first things that we worked on this year. Um, so, so delighted. No more paperwork, no more debt, uh, no more stress for parents, uh, making sure that, you know, kids are able to come in here and get what they need. And uh, this goes along with some historic budget investments that have also been made. Uh, grateful to the legislature for all they made happen in child care and early education, uh, putting us on a path to, to universal free pre-K, a 10% increase in Chapter 70 state funding for our local public schools, expanded pathways into college and career training for our high school students, lots of important and prioritized investments that we have made uh, through this budget. And again, I want to thank the speaker and the legislature for their partnership. This is Massachusetts values in action. And I want to thank the school staff, all our educators and folks out there working hard every day uh, to make sure that, that our young people are well cared for. So uh, thank you so much for having me. Thank you for welcoming us, uh, Mayor. Um, we. Um, we, uh, we now are going to hear from our, our speaker who was up all night preparing the American chop suey that, uh, that those <laughs> kids were, were eating back there in the gymnasium. Speaker Mariano. Thank, thank you, Governor. It is fitting that you have pasta the day that we're here. I thought that was very thoughtful, uh, Mr. Superintendent. Where are you? <laughs> uh, thank you, Governor. Uh, this was uh, an easy one for me, uh, so I, and I'm sweating. I'm standing up here sweating. This reminds me of the days in June when I hated to be on this link. <laughs> there was no air. You could open all these windows and there's nothing. Uh, but anyway, I'll carry on even though I start to drip all over my remarks, although I didn't write any. Uh, I, I did wanted to just say I have a lot of great memories here. I made a lot of friends. Met a lot of kids coming through here who I still see around the city. And you're liable to see them anywhere. And of course, I still look young and vibrant. They, they have aged and, and are now adults. So I never know when I'm going to get hailed in the supermarket or chased down in the parking lot to, to rehash some event that happened in their academic career that involved me. Some of them pleasant, some of them not so pleasant. <laughs> but all of them in the interest of making this a better place. And when we saw that uh, it looked like the funding for the, lunch, the free lunch program was about to go under, Andy Vargas approached me with an amendment that he was going to stick to the budget in the budget. And I asked him the question I ask everyone when they come in with an amendment, how much? How much is this going to cost? And he had a rough number, a little under target, a little under target, which, which I think might have been on purpose. Uh, so the next step was to go see the finance guy, Aaron. And the conversation we had was about everything but the money. I said, I'd really like to do this. I said, I can remember coming into this school and having kids put their head down on the desk at 8 o'clock because they were exhausted. And I'd ask, the first question I asked, did you eat today? No. No. There was no one home. So they just come to school. And you learn pretty quickly through the observations of these kids that if they don't start out with something in the morning, you're not going to have them by lunchtime. You will lose them. And this has always been important to me. And that's why I thought the free lunch idea was a great idea. And when we had the opportunity to make it permanent, and Aaron in his, I don't know how he does it, but he moves the numbers around, and all of a sudden, we have money. 
and we had enough money for this. And I couldn't think of a better way to spend it than on a free lunch program. And if you go down there and talk to those kids, you'll, you'll realize how important it is. Because they're all having a good time. They're all gnawing on apples. I don't know what it is. There seems to be an apple shortage, but these kids can't get enough apples. So I do think that it's something we all should be proud of. All the members here who voted for this, Senator Keenan, we're in the Senate, Senate, it wasn't as widely supported as it probably was in the House. But the Senator stayed with us and made sure that the message was, was carried into the Senate. But I want to thank all the reps who are up here uh, who, who actually worked to make this a, a really good bill. And I look forward to, we, there'll be times when we're going to dig for the money. Make no mistake about it, it's not going to be easy every year. We don't get APA money every year, do we? No. No. No, that's a little... But it, it will be a challenge to make, keep this commitment, but you have my word, and I'll even give the word to these guys who are going to be here after me, that we'll make, it, we'll make it work. So with that, I just want to say thank you. Thank you to the principal for hosting us. Uh, wherever he went. Oh, there he is. Um, you know... It was fun to come back, a little bit, a little bit fun. It wasn't a knockdown ball. Was but I really did enjoy it. I enjoy seeing the kids. I forget how small kindergarten kids are uh, and, and, and how wise they are. Uh, anyway, that's it for me. I'm going to introduce Jim Mikowitz, who put all this stuff together. So, Aaron. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And, uh, uh, thank you for having us here uh, today at Snug, at Snug Harbor uh, Community School. And, uh, yeah, I did get a visa uh, to get here, so uh, I can't believe there's traffic leaving the city in the middle of the day, uh, as I said to some of the folks. But it's, um, it's great to be here, and, you know, the speaker did say how this, is, uh, this was an easy one. Uh, it was an easy we had a, It was a difficult budget process uh, this year, but this was the easiest part of that difficult budget process, was, was supporting this initiative and, and, and focusing on this initiative and making sure... Uh, that we uh, we fought to to get this over the finish line, and it's um, you know ha not just the amount of kids that are going to be affected by this, uh, but the, also the families in in, it, in itself. The amount of money that they're going to save every every day uh, by the ability to have these uh, these school meals available to them uh, is uh, is something that's you know not getting a ton of coverage or not a ton of. Uh, 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 press or whatnot, but certainly just as as important as anything in terms of the folks that are that live that need this, you know, that are on the margins, and that something like this is actually going to help them uh, stay over that or stay afloat. And so, we're very proud and very and thankful of this. Uh, you know, to, to uh, when the federal government was deciding not to uh, to pick this up, uh, I believe in 2022. Uh, you know, there we were at a crossroads on these conversations and. We've had a lot of those crossroads conversations, you know, in terms of dealing with, the, with what's going on with the federal government. Um, but in Massachusetts, we don't we don't waver. Uh, you know, we don't we don't uh, cower. We stand up and we make sure that we 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 take care of our, our citizens and our Commonwealth. And um, and that is something that we're very proud of. Uh, I want to thank the members of the House uh, for their w unwavering commitment, particularly Representative Vargas and others uh, that really, uh, you know, put this on the forefront continuously uh, and made sure that we uh, were focused, laser focused, uh, whether it was through the budget process or actually making it permanent. Uh, I just want to also thank my colleagues in the Senate, uh, particularly Chair Rodericks, uh, who I have the pleasure of working with uh, and trying to produce a budget with, uh, you know, the last five years. And, you know, one, one thing that we've been dealing with, uh, or one thing that has been really a priority of not just the House and the Senate, but also, you know, the legislature, I mean, not just the legislature, but also, also the governor, has been, you know, the discussion about educa education equity. And, uh, you know, nothing's more education equity than making sure that every, every student has an opportunity to, co to go to school with feeling, you know, feeling good and feeling, you know, refreshed and, and having a full belly. And so, uh, you know, when we talk about, like, the Student Opportunity Act and the things that are important related to that and pumping more money into Chapter 70, you know, that, those are very important things, and those are obviously, you know, critical discussions, but this is just as much a, a critical discussion in terms of that, per, making sure that every student has, uh, you know, gets at the starting gate in the right way. And so we're very proud of that. We're very proud of this accomplishment today. Uh, and I lastly just want to thank the speaker 
uh, it is nice to come back to a school to see to see him in his other elements uh, as I get to see him as a, as a, as our boss and, a, and our leader in the house. Uh, but get to see him in his other elements is is, is fun as well. And uh, but more importantly, uh, you know, he has been such an unwavering leader on this issue and many others uh, for us. And so we're very 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 proud to support him in this initiative. I'm very proud uh, to have him as our speaker. So thank you, Mr. Speaker, for everything that you continue to do for all of us in the House. Uh, and lastly, also the governor. Uh, I want to thank the governor for her continuing support and everything that she's been doing uh, in working with us um, um, you know, in the last couple months, particularly here. Uh, and so thank you for having me again. And uh, I'm going to turn it over to uh, a woman that was uh, very in instrumental in making this possible, uh, not just because uh, she knocked on our door every day uh, and, uh, and made sure that we were sticking this in the budget, but um, but Erin uh, McAleer from, the, from Project Bread has been uh, a true uh, partner uh, in this initiative and many others. So uh, we want to give her a round of applause. Thank you, Erin. <laughs> Thank you. I'm so proud to be here alongside Governor Healy, Lieutenant Governor Driscoll, Speaker Mariano, Chairman Mike Lewitz, Mayor Koch, and members of the school committee, as well as Senator Keenan, Representative Vargas, Representative Chan, Representative Ayers, and of course, thank you to Superintendent Mulvey and the Quincy Public Schools for hosting us today. No child will sit in a Massachusetts classroom hungry ever again. Ever again. <laughs> For too many years, the school meal system was broken. And I'm going a little off script here, but it was broken almost 40 years ago when I was in elementary school. I was raised by a single mom, and she constantly stressed about putting food on the table, and we couldn't afford school meals. And so when I think about what's been accomplished, I think about my mom and the many parents out there who no longer have this worry for them. And it was actually only days after my mother passed away that the Feed Kids campaign was launched. And we envisioned a new system that ensured equitable access to school meals for every single student in Massachusetts, regardless of their circumstances outside of school. I want to give a huge thank you to Representative Vargas and Senator Dina Minico, who filed this late legislation when it seemed really big and bold and could this actually get done? And they always knew it was the right thing to do and, and they stuck their neck out and advocated every single day. And we quickly garnered the support of over half of the legislature, including bipartisan support for this initiative. We convened students, parents, school professionals, social justice advocates, healthcare workers, houses of worship and more. Over 130 organizations joined the coalition and more than 5,000 advocates sent over 23,000 messages to legislators to voice their overwhelming support for this program. With School Meals for All permanent in our state, Project Bread will continue to support schools in the years and months ahead. Our School Food Fellowship, which we operate here in the city of Quincy in the Quincy School District, allows school nutrition directors to refine their skills and gives them the tools to provide healthy and appealing meals for kids. We will continue to share delicious, kid-tested recipes across districts and provide resources to schools and families to ensure that school meal participation remains high and more children can access the nutritious benefits available to them at no cost. As has already been mentioned, Massachusetts is a national leader on innovative systemic solutions to hunger. The success we're celebrating today is an incredible example of the change that can be made when we all come together around a common purpose, especially one as essential as eradicating hunger in our state. As we celebrate today, we know that we must keep up the momentum. We are feeding all kids at school. We're integrating food and nutrition supports into the healthcare system. And we're ensuring that food resources are accessible when and where and how individuals and families need them. And all those changes are being led by the experiences of the people in our state that have the lived expertise of food insecurity. Together, we can make the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, we will make the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, the first state to solve hunger. And Project Bread is committed to driving that goal forward, building on the incredible success we're celebrating here today. So I am so grateful, and I know none of this could happen without the incredible leadership of those standing beside me, the leadership of Governor Healy, Lieutenant Governor Driscoll, House Speaker Mariano, Senate President Spilka, and of course, the leadership of the Ways and Means Committees and the Education Committees. I'll say it again, thank you to Representative Andy Vargas and Senator Dina Minico for spearheading this bill. Thank you to Desi and Rob Leshen for their partnership. 
Thank you to our organizational partners. And I think even most important, thank you to the thousands of advocates who spoke out and shared their stories and their passions. Together, we are improving the health and food insecurity of an entire generation of kids and generations of kids to come. Thank you. Thank you, Erin. Thank you for everything you do for the Quincy Public Schools. Uh, it's a great partnership, so we really appreciate it. It's an honor to be with you all here today to represent the Quincy Public Schools. I have so many people to thank uh, today because of so many involved in this important initiative. Of course, thank you to Governor Healy, Lieutenant Governor Driscoll, Speaker Mariano, Mayor Koch, the State Legislative Delegation, Commissioner Riley, City Councilors and School Committee for all of your work in supporting the students and families in the Quincy Public Schools. We're all very grateful and proud to be one of the first states in the country to offer free breakfast and lunch to all students. An amazing feat. Free meals in schools put all children on the same playing field to learn and strive and thrive. Free meals end the stigma of lunch shaming or identifying students by their income status. We in Quincy believe in a supportive environment that promotes unity among students and families, and this program greatly assists with this critical mission. The lunchroom can now, without question, be a place for students to relax, regroup, and reset for the rest of the school day. This monumental change has given us the opportunity to end child hunger right here in our own community, which is amazing. The additional state funds will help us improve the overall quality and freshness of our meals, which is extremely important, and allow us to focus on buying locally and procure sustainable food and paper products. In Quincy, we have successfully increased the number of meals we serve to our students by 25% since the beginning of the free meals program, which is amazing. 25%. It's fantastic. On a lighter note, this great benefit reduces the morning stress of getting our children to school every day. Our amazing staff of nutrition and culinary experts can now lighten the load of our families by, by allowing them to forgo the need to prepare uh, their lunch and their snacks for the day. So that's a great asset to our families as well. Lastly, I'd like to thank Assistant Superintendent Aaron Perkins, members of the Superintendent's Leadership Team, uh, Principal Scott Perfetio and his team here at the Snug Harbor Community School, of course, uh, Food Service Director Sarah Dufour, and Snug Harbor Cafeteria Workers Kathy McGann and Robin Scanlon for all the work that they tirelessly do every day to support our students and families. So thank you all very much, and thank you to everyone who made this day possible. Thank you. This time right here? All right. Uh, uh -huh. All right. Well, I don't know that I should be the one signing this. There are a lot of people that made this possible, but um, are there any penmanship teachers here? How long has it been since you've been in the really? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I want anyway, to record this. Here you go. All right. There it is. I mean, now it's really official. <laughs> I'm going to come back and visit with some of you separately, but we're happy to take on-topic questions. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Hi. Well, first of all, as someone who grew up in Lowell and also benefited from reduced lunch, but it was so hard for my parents to even pay, I want to say thank you so much for passing that. I'm a reporter, but either way, gotta gotta get mm -hmm. things where where it's good. So I know in Massachusetts. For a family of four, I mean, they needed to make around 50000 52 to get that reduced lunch. But once again, that was even something that was hard or impossible for these families. How important is it also for those that were qualifying for reduced lunch? Well, uh, and I'll obviously welcome the comments of others, but this is super important. I mean, it just should not be the case. We're Massachusetts. We're home of the first public school, first public library. We pride ourselves in education. We pride ourselves in access to health care, and we've always looked after and made investments in our young people, right? They're, they're, our, they're our future, they're our now. And so this is, this is fundamental, and I'm just uh, really grateful and proud of the team that came together um, to, to make this happen and deliver it up so that, as people have said, no child 
is walking into a school or leaving a school hungry. I mean, that, that's so important. And I think the, the point made, too, about the stress on parents, I was raised by a single mom. She had five of us. And it was not easy. And, you know, it was at a time when you had, um, you could go through a line and there were kids that had a certain ticket and there were kids that were able to just pay cash and there were kids that brought their lunch. But it was very clear who fell into what category. And I think part of the effort here in recognizing the stigma, no child, life's hard enough, no child should bear the burden of stigma when it comes to something as fundamental as food, which is absolutely essential to their learning, to their growth. Can I just say something about, no one's ever had a hard time hearing me, um, about the reduced lunch program. For those of us who are in a classroom, and we get a few in the front row here, one of the worst assignments you could have to come back to school in September is to start collecting the farms for reduced lunches. It was a paper nightmare where you turned into a full-time bookkeeper for the first couple of weeks of school before you could even determine who was going to eat lunch. So eliminating that was a big step in making the on-time teaching uh, ability of teachers that allows it to increase and allows them to get a better handle on organizing and, and getting to know their kids. So it's important in a lot of different ways. So. All right. Any? Um, so the uh, last couple of years, cost of living has gone up significantly, and, and food in particular. Uh, I have kind of two questions. One is, have, have you seen that put more of a burden on My second question is about the summertime um, when school is not in session and this, this program uh, won't be available. Is there um, plans or something in place for that gap between June and September? Right. That's great. Well, you know what? Why don't you hear directly from Aaron Mackler who can answer and provide a little bit of context to the first part of that question. Aaron. Um, that's a, a great question, and um, yeah, we are, for the first part of the question, there is certainly an increased demand on food pantries, but part of why we're here today is that, you know, food pantries were really meant for emergency responses, right, for the impending storm that's coming this weekend that's going to result in an emergency response that needed, not for the daily needs, um, and so that's why we need solutions like the one we're celebrating today. This is an example of a systemic solution to a systemic problem of food insecurity. Um, and when it comes to summer, we do have an incredible program partner, uh, a project bred partners with the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education on the Summer Eats program, which provides free school, free meals for kids when school is out. Um, sites all over the state um, where families can go and pick up a meal, no questions asked, no identification required. We always need help raising awareness about that program. Um, it's really important, so I appreciate you asking the question. Um, and then next summer, the, uh, there'll be the rollout of the summer EBT program, which um, Congress passed last year, which will provide another support system for kids. So there's a huge commitment to feeding kids. I think you've heard it from everyone here today. Um, there's programs in place. We have to make them accessible, effective, and we have to raise awareness about them so that families can, can access them. Can you just clarify how many kids are going to be impacted by this? Yeah, that's a great. I mean, today there's 500,000 kids across Massachusetts eating school lunch and, and not worried about the cost. So I would say all 500,000 kids across the state um, that now can have it with no stigma um, are, is the real number that is, is benefited from this program. Test my Spanish this early. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Already, there you go. Put you on the spot. Yeah. Eh, representante, primero que nada, ¿qué significa eso de verdad para nuestras comunidades? Como bien lo estaba mencionando eh, la persona de Project Bread, estamos hablando de 500 mil estudiantes que van a ser beneficiados de esto. Eh, ¿Qué significa? Bueno, lo primordial es que los estudiantes van a poder comer antes de aprender y los estudiantes que no comen no pueden aprender. O sea, eso es lo más importante de este programa. 
Lo segundo es que cada familia va, va eh, eh, a recibir 1,200 dólares en dinero que no van a gastar en la comida de cada niño que tienen en su hogar. O sea, es un beneficio no solamente nutritivo, pero también financiero a las familias eh, de nuestras comunidades. Para ti, obviamente, eres padre, felicidades. ¿Qué significa Gracias. Que para ti? Tú también creciste en esa zona del Valle de Nana, que sabemos que es una zona bien impactada, donde hay muchas familias migrantes y muchas familias de bajos recursos. Sí, para mí como padre, pero también como miembro de la comunidad de Hebro, sé que es muy importante en nuestras familias saber que cuando dejan sus niños en las escuelas no van a tener hambre, no importa la documentación que traigan o que no tengan, que tienen la seguridad que cada estudiante en esa escuela va a tener la alimentación para poder aprender. Gracias a ustedes. And it makes a huge difference to have a teacher at the top of the house, so. <laughs> That's great. How will this program Thank you. change nutrition requirements for, uh, for seniors? Well, we put enough. Yeah. yeah. Do you want to? Um, the, the requirements themselves um, aren't, aren't changing. Um, those are, you know, the federal requirements that have been put in place. Um, I will say this, it does improve the nutrition, and you heard it from the superintendent, that it puts more money into the school system, um, which allows them to purchase locally sourced food. What the speaker shared is, is real, right? School nutrition directors are no longer bookkeepers or debt collectors, right? And so instead they're focusing on menu de development and taste testing with kids. And so we are confident that the school um, meal quality will improve. And now that we know it's permanent, that gives, you know, every year it's been, you know, what's going to happen next year. Now they can just start planning for the next several years of new recipes and taste testing with kids and, and knowing participation is going to be high and that they'll have the revenue. And as I said, Project Bread will be a partner in continuing to support schools and in the School Food Fellowship and, and, and sharing recipes across different districts. Thanks, everybody. I also want to thank, you know, the question about food security, of course it's real, and we saw an exacerbation of, uh, of need, ho housing insecurity, food insecurity, everything through COVID, right? And we still live with some of the vestiges of that. One of the reasons, though, that we acted quickly, uh, we saw it and the legislature came through big time, $20 million in relief for farms devastated weeks ago by floods in Western and Central Mass. Part of that story and why that action happened is because they were integral to food security networks, pantries, CSA, basic, basic food security in different regions of the state. So, you know, I know this is an issue that leaders are, are really focused on. We know how important food security is to the health and well-being of not only young people, but people around this state. And this was an important day for our Commonwealth because forevermore, no child will go hungry in school. Thank you all for coming.